made sure nobody was around. I locked the door to my room. I peeked inside, and I was crushed. The first time I was truly disappointed into something I was excited about. What they had sent me was a big thumb. How is this going to fool anybody? So I've got to read the instructions. Where are they? Okay. The instructions said, place the thumb, the fake thumb on the right thumb. Pull the scarf from the index with the other hand. Make a fist. Push the silk into the red, or the red silk into the thumb. And wave your hands around as if you have just accomplished a miracle. Easy enough. I present to you the miracle. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot better day I got then. I had no clue how this was gonna fool anybody. I chucked it aside, paid no more attention to it, never wanted to do it ever again. So, I felt like I was deceived by this description of the ad. And I know this doesn't really pertain to a lot of people, so I'm, I'm, I'm creating this presentation for everybody in this room. When I say you can be deceived by this ad, I'm speaking in a physical sense here. But how many times have we been deceived by something that we've purchased, or a promise in our job, or anything like that, and you actually go through the work, and you find out this isn't what I signed up for. This isn't why I want to be here. And that, that can pertain to everything, I mean, even just the smallest little ideas we have or our goals. Um, so how many of you guys have had a career long enough that you can remember back when you were excited about it, now you kind of lost that spark, and you're just kind of like, yeah, let's go to work. <laughs> But if you remember when you first researched this job and when you were going to school for it, you were honestly excited about it. I mean, you were pumped. You're like, this is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to do. And you're telling everybody that you're going to do these great, wonderful things. But then your coworkers and your boss to ask you what you do. Just type numbers on the computer all day. You know, I send out mailers all day. I go around and meet people. That's not what you wanted to do. You wanted to create these awesome new designs. And you wanted to change the world. For example, in my generation, a lot of my friends, when I went to school, they wanted to be video game designers. That was the big thing. I had a lot of my friends, they would think that they were going to go to school to become a video game designer, and I even had a friend who actually went to school for this. But it, it, he didn't follow through on it. In fact, what a lot of these people think is that they, they can create this idea in their mind of, oh, this is what I want a video game to be. I want it to be, you know, I want to have the city street here, and then you have to go from point A to point B and all these objectives. And, Let's just go create that right now. They don't understand the schooling and the work that goes behind it and the coding and just everything you have to do to achieve that goal and all of a sudden it just doesn't look as glamorous anymore. Uh, so basically sometimes we just get excited about the fun stuff and not, you know, the boring stuff and the behind the scenes work. For instance, if you guys have ever seen me do a card trick and you're like, yeah, that's pretty good. You don't know how many hours I put into it. Like, that's the stuff nobody ever sees. Uh, so I, I looked it up online, actually, and CareerBuilder did a study in 2013 that said 31% of, of graduates are never employed within their degree field. And that's a pretty high percentage if you think about it. But of that 31%, only 8% was due to no openings in the job market, remaining 23% left that the positions were there, they just didn't pursue them. And I'm led to believe that you know, either they didn't finish their degree, or a lot of people that I know now will finish their degree, and they're not interested in that line of work anymore because they were pretty much forced to follow through. They paid all this money to go to school. First year's exciting, second year's tough, third year, I just want to go over fourth year. I never want to talk about this ever again. So, if you're truly, and you, another thing I forgot to point out here too, is a lot of people will actually finish the schooling and they're excited, or, and pursue their career, but I'm led to believe there's some people who will go to the interview process and they don't get the position. And honestly, I think, and I don't want to brag about this, but I 
I've never had an interview that I did not get the position. I think there's one time that I've never got a job that I interviewed for. And I, I credit that to just my drive and, you know, want to be able to make money and succeed and all sorts of stuff. But when you're going just because you did the schooling, you're not excited about that. And the position that you're interviewing for can see that. And so you got to really be excited about what you want to do. Um, so is there anybody here that's brave enough to tell me a position they had, that they've been there long enough and they're just not excited about anymore? Like I'm, I'm anxious to see if anybody has that here. Um, just a Monday through Friday kind of job. Anything. I know, right? That, that's, the, that's the idea and that's what I like to hear. Even if it's false, keep, keep living that facade and eventually it'll catch on. So. Uh, but if not, that's okay, because I made an example. So, for instance, um, somebody who might have been excited about their job, let's say, um, I'm going to go as simple as a plumber, okay? This is a bottom line job, like people, I mean, it's, it's a labor, dirty, hard working job, but they get paid a lot of money. So I can see how somebody would have interest in this, because I have a lot of friends who do maintenance work, HVAC work, construction, and they get excited about the idea of creating something, and that's why they want to do it. And providing, you know, like a luxury or an amenity to the family. It's like they want to create a, they want to build a home, that's what they build. To them, they're not building a house, they're building a home. They're building a piece of art. But there's all this work that goes into it. They don't understand that there's going to be all these hours, there's going to be blood, sweat, and tears put into it. They think eventually they're going to get beat up and wore out, and then you see all these older guys who've been in the career forever, and they just grumble around all day, walking through their work, just hating the world and ready to go home. I think that's just simply because they lost sight of what their job was doing. So think about what your career is right now. No matter what it is, I'm going to keep on with this plumber idea. A plumber should not consider himself as somebody who is welding pipes, getting water from point A to point B. It's not a material job. What he's doing is providing water to somebody who doesn't, wouldn't normally have it if he wasn't there. He's providing the ability for people to have clean drinking water, to shower, to have sewer. So all these different things that we probably take for granted. But there's an amazing opportunity there for this guy to provide all these things to everybody else that would normally have it if he wasn't there. So I will full circle back to where I was at with this magic trick, going back to what this process went through my mind, where what do I do with this now? I know the secret. It's here. The ad promised everything that is there. It's easy to do. There's minimal practice. It is a professional magic trick. I have some people do this. It will fool and amaze your friends. That was hard to believe at the time. But it comes with everything you need. I didn't see that because I wasn't ready to put in the work. In order to make something successful, you have to put yourself into your work. You can't go directly off the ad. You have to take something and make it your own. So, to bring this full circle, I will, I gotta put the microphone here on the stand because the magician needs his hands. I will close this with the version of this routine, or this illusion. Uh, by the way, I hope everybody here took the magician's code, the oath, right? Everybody just agrees to that, because otherwise I can't really show you how this works. That's okay. Uh, so here's what you do. Just like the ad says, is you go here and you push the silk into your hand. In my version of it, it doesn't vanish, it just changes colors. Okay, all the way down until it's just a little bit left. Okay, now I'm going to show you how this works. So I hope everybody took the magician's oath. Okay, uh, what this uses, it actually uses a second silk, which I have over here. So this one here is still in the pumpkin, but I'll explain to you here how this works. Um, now, all you have to do is come here, and you push this into your hand just like this. Just as the ad said, push it right inside the pumpkin, okay. all the way until it's out of sight. And then what you do is you actually walk on stage with your hand closed the entire time. Don't open your hand, because that's when people will realize that there's probably something in there, okay? So keep your hand closed. And then you take the second silk, and you push this in right here. And then you can get it to change color. Okay? Like that. 
Now you gotta make sure not to pull it all the way out because then they'll know that you have two silks. So, just push this in real slow, and you can truly change the color <laughs> of the silk. So that's the moral of the story. Make sure everything you do, you make it your own, and put your own little twist on it, and I guarantee you will enjoy everything that you do. Thank you guys, and I appreciate you guys for coming. <laughs> Oh, you wait one two full of slain at Hogwarts, eight six seven five three zero nine. So, uh, any questions? Going once, going twice. I have questions. Go ahead. I heard you're doing a show sometime. How was fun? Absolutely. I'm glad you brought that up because it's no longer a plug. I'm answering questions. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yes, tomorrow at the Coliseum at six p.m. I am doing a hour long magic. Uh, magic show, and the 6 p.m. show is a family-friendly show, all ages invited, um, followed by my hour magic show, there will be Zach Tenebo, Z Stoner, she's not here, he's on the road, he's on his way back into town now, he'll follow me up with an hour-long comedy hypnosis show, um, then, so that's about a two-hour show, we kick everybody out of the building, then at 9 o'clock we reopen the doors for an 18 and up show, which again is an hour show, and it is an hour uh, hypnosis show. There's nothing vulgar and offensive in either of my shows. The adult show has the fire, eating, the glass walk, swallowing needles, and a couple other things that I just wouldn't, wouldn't want to do to kids. Or for kids. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so if you guys are interested in coming to that show, uh, like I mentioned earlier, I do have a box back there. Write your name, put a business card, anything you want in there, and uh, I'll draw for two free tickets, and I'll let you guys choose your show, whatever you want. And for coming here today, I've created a promo code where you can get 20% off your tickets online. Uh, just go to tstormchases.org. There's flyers back there. You can take one off. It's a fundraiser for them. Uh, and then the promo code is Free Friday. Uh, there's little flyers. You can have all your info. And if you guys want to purchase tickets, I do have some here with me. You'll get 20% off cash or card. It doesn't matter. So, uh, Once again, I want to give Robin a hand for helping out with the food because that food was awesome. Now we will taste it. It's my full-time job. Uh, it's not. I do a 40-hour-a-week job. Um, I, I consider this my full-time job because I work less hours, but I get paid more, if that makes sense. Uh, so I consider this my main income. But uh, no, the, the business side of it, I do a lot of like corporate shows, uh, private events. I actually have a wedding coming up that I'm doing. I'm excited about, excited about that. Um, and as you see here, not all my stuff is the fire eating and the crazy stuff. Uh, I do a lot of comedy stuff and I get everybody involved. Um, other than that, like I said, a lot of my advertising is social media, so I appreciate you guys. Everybody follows Riley, me you're so here. Uh, even just mentions me. And I'm actually doing a thing, which I'll, um, it's kind of a bakery member thing, but I'll extend it out to everybody here. I'm doing almost like an affiliate program because, like I said, it travels word of mouth. And to kind of promote that, um, anybody who gets me a show and lets me know, say, hey, I referred you to this person or whatever, and a show actually comes from that, I will give you 20% of the show just for kind of being my street team. Um, so that's kind of limited here, and then, yeah, if you guys are Baker members, there's all sorts of crazy perks, so if you're not a Baker member, hop on that. So, yeah. Travis, uh, what's the comment? Do you follow on I'm just being more comfortable. Uh, a little bit different to it is, and that's why I like doing these three Fridays. Uh, I was just telling Craig that I'd do these every week if I could because I love being on stage. The more you're up here, the better you're going to get at it. 
Uh, but on a side note, I wasn't risking my life this time, so. Just a little bit Sorry, he had just done some magic. Uh, so yeah, and again on that side note, they're doing uh, high school talks and college talks. If anybody has an in for that, let me know. I'll take advantage of you right now. So, um, so yeah, I think if that's it, I'll turn it over to that. Thank you so much. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. Next, uh, uh, next week we have Food Truck Friday, so we don't do on the lap. Uh, that will work on our staff, so there will be no Food Friday next week. But next week is a uh, food from the Abbey Group, the Abbey Group Institute. So, what are you going to do? You're going to blow minds until you say blow minds. That's a lot of voice And then the week after that, we have an open slot. So, when students come open, so if someone's looking for what's that date, Craig? August 5th. Yeah. On August 5th, we have open slots. If anyone is going to be interested in hosting their own uh, free Friday, it all takes us bringing in lunch uh, for a second block room. So uh, next week, be here. Uh, if you guys got anything else to do today, you can go around, uh, go back to work, or you can stay here. We'll play some Pokemon Go. <laughs> uh, so thanks for being here. I appreciate it. If you want more information on the bakery, I'm bad. This is Brian. Find some else in the bakery shirt. We'll be happy to talk. Thank you. Have a good weekend. If I get him to do some more magic, will you guys stick around? I'm going to get him to do some more magic. Hold on. Travis, dude, I got like 20 people here that want to see another trick. You want to see another trick? Yeah, real quick. What's like the fastest trick you got in the world? trick I have? Yeah. Help me out okay, real quick. Great. We'll do it for the camera. Okay, so I got the four clubs and the seven, right? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sit the seven down, hold your hand out, and I'm gonna tear the four just like this. Okay? So here's the four clubs, right? Okay, I'm gonna put one of these pieces in your hand. Go ahead and close your hand around that. This time I'm gonna take the seven. I'm gonna rip the seven just like this. Okay? Are you ready? Now watch. This is seven. You got the four. Here we go on the count of three. One, two, three. Open that up. They switch places. <laughs> that is awesome, right? <laughs> oh, perfect. All right, cool Good guys. Deal. Thanks for watching. If you don't know Travis, go follow him on on these on Twitter, right there. Travis, oh. Travis Nine, Travis Nine Nine Magic. Everybody, say bye.